Hello, I'm Justin Mack with Eason LED Video Displays. I'm here today at Full Compass to talk to you about our LED video displays. All right, so what we're going to be doing to today's demonstration is we're actually going to be hanging the screen from a structure. So here I have a, a truss structure set up um, and we're going to be attaching the screen to this structure. Uh, the first step is to attach our header bar or hanging bar to the structure. Now I cannot stress enough how important it is to have this type of work performed by someone who is competent and certified. Uh, when you're dealing with anything that's going to be hung or rigged overhead, safety is the most important factor. Um, so please make sure this is done by a qualified, competent person. All right, so we're going to go up here and install this. Now with these header bars, you have the option to have the eye bolt like we're showing here with our header bar, or instead of the eye bolt, we can actually um, put a, uh, a clamp on there so that way you don't have to go through what we're doing here. You can actually just clamp the header bar directly to a uh, steel pipe or truss. So now that we've hung the first header bar, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and hang the other two header bars. And then uh, the next step will be actually be to attach the cabinet to this bar. So the next step is we have our, our uh, hanging bar in place is to actually hang the cabinet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these alignment pins, we're going to line them up with the holes. They're on the front. I'm going to take the uh, eight millimeter Allen key that we provide with all of our screens. I'm going to turn the coffin locks. There's a nice little diagram on the back to tell you which way to turn the coffin locks. And now I've locked those in place. So now the next step is I'm going to take and I'm going to hang the rest of the cabinets down in my row. And then I'll make the adjustments for alignment to make sure everything's nice and plumb. So I'm going to go ahead and hang this next row and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the adjustments. So now we've had, we have all our, our cabinets hung in our row. We've tightened down all the, uh, the top cam pieces. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do, want to do the, uh, the vertical pieces. Now we're going to slide this pin over here in this position and that's going to keep the cabinet from swaying. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my cam lock or a coffin lock. Twist it nice and tight. You'll hear it snap into its final position. Now this secures, secures these two cabinets on this hanging bar. Now the next thing we have to look out for is where the two hanging bars meet. These have to be at a level, uh, these two have to be level and plumb together. If not, what will happen is as we start building the screen, we might get a, an outward V like this, or they might start trying to come together. Um, so it's very important at this step that you make the necessary adjustments to your reading hardware to ensure that these two bars are completely level. And then it's the same step. I'm going to slide over the alignment pin, double check to make sure everything looks like it's lining up. And nothing looks funny. And again, lock my coffin lock. And now I've successfully connected these two cabinets that are attached on two different hanging bars. And then again, you can just kind of just rub your finger to make sure that this feels plumb. There's not any kind of major variation between the two cabinets. Um, and then just continue that down the line. So the next step, we have our first row completely assembled. Um, everything's locked into place. And I'm going to go a step, step more for safety. And I'm going to install these backing plates on the back of the screen. Not only is this another st step for safety to ensure that um, none of the cabinets are going to come loose or why it's being disassembled just in case someone missed uh, a coffin lock. This also allows to pull the front of the screen and the cabinets, everything nice and flush. Even though we might not have any seams visible where the cabinets connect, if one cabinet somehow is slightly in front of the other or extruded just a, just a slight half millimeter, you know, one tenth of a millimeter, it might be seen as a seam, uh, especially when you're dealing with a tight pixel pitch like this one, which is a 3.91. So again, with a 3.91, I'm gonna go ahead and install these backing plates uh, for safety and to ensure that on the front of it, we have a nice, smooth, seamless display. Again, these use an eight millimeter Allen key. 
that we provide. And I'll go ahead and continue this down the line. Now the next step is we're going to connect power in our, our data line from our processor. So pretty simple. You take the blue power con connector, take your power feed to where it says power in, twist and connect it. There's a power indicator, indicator light here on the back side. Uh, that should turn red and that lets you know that this cabinet is receiving power. Take your data line from your processor. Again, we haven't talked about the processor yet, but we're going to get ready to touch on that here pretty soon. But that's our data line that runs from our processor. Now, I don't have my processor powered up or even connected to this, but I, on the back here, I have a test button. What this allows me to do is on this cabinet, I can run a series of test patterns to check to make sure that uh, no damage to the cabinets happened during transportation, to make sure I don't have any pixels out, uh, just to make sure that everything on the front of the cabinet looks good. Uh, and again, that's a nice little button, a nice little feature to have on the back side of this cabinet. Now the next step is I have power. Now I'm going to take my looping power cables. I'm going to take the blue end of the power, power con to where it says power out, twist and connect it, and then just daisy chain my cabinets on down the line. The same thing with my data signal. I'll just take my data signal, come out of the other port, and into the next port. And I'll continue this on down the row. So now we've covered doing the first row. And more likely, most, chan or most cases, you're going to want to do more than just one row. So I'm going to cover how to hang the next row. One of the nice features you'll find about our cabinet design is as I grab the cabinet and I slide in place, the handle serves as two purposes. One, it helps me pick it up out of the road case. And number two, on the cabinet above, it holds it into position. And what this allows me to do is take my tool, lock the coffin locks into place, And now the rest of the cabinet can be built by one person, or if there's multiple people, they can now work side by side and kind of build the wall and speed up the process. Again, that's just another nice feature we have. And the same thing too as if you're going to remove the cabinet and remove the wall, this handle will fall right back into the channel and now I can grab the cabinet and put it back in the road case. Just like so. I hope you enjoyed watching these videos. If you need more information, please visit fullcompass.com or pick up your phone and contact your Full Compass sales representative. Thank you very much.